Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the Logitech G Pro X gaming keyboard. Now, just jumping ahead a little bit here, as you all can see, it is hot swappable and we have every key variation here and I will give you a sound test of every single key variation when we get to that down the road. But anyways, let's check out what we get in the box or boxes. All right, so as far as in your box, you can get your keyboard. Our keyboard is stocked with the GX blue switches. Now on Logitech's website, you can get it with any switch. You can get it with the reds, the browns, or the blues. Again, ours is stocked with the blues right over here. You can get your USB cable, micro USB with that standard Logitech tooth design right there, as you've seen on all their mice, their wireless mice at least. And again, it just goes right in the backstage and they're very nice and sturdy. But this USB cable is quite thick and again, very durable. Over here, we have three boxes of switches, the blues, the browns, and the reds. These box run 50 bucks for 92 switches switches in each box right there. And as you can see, the switches are in there pretty nice and secure in this nice little foam, give you a keycap puller and a switch puller. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and talk about the design. And this is kind of a questionable thing in my opinion right here. Talking this being the G Pro X, the new one, it looks exactly like the old G Pro. It even says just Pro on the side. It doesn't even say Pro X. So if you're sitting next to your buddy or whatever, say, hey man, look, I got the new G Pro X. He's be like, that's no X, that's just the same as mine. The other thing that throws me off a little bit on the design right here, and I'm sure it's just a design thing, but again, just a little weird to me. As you see, we have this really big lip right above here. Now you have your uh, light control where you can turn them on or off, and then you have your game mode, you got caps lock, and then what's the other one there, scroll lock, and then you have your Logitech logo in RGB. But you have all this empty space. Again, I don't know why, is it something as far as the build, or is it just a design thing? I would have liked to see like these buttons scooched over here, and then some media controls up there. So again, since we have all this space, let's utilize it. I mean, the G Pro keyboard is one of the top selling out there, right? So a lot of people love that design. So it's kind of like, well, why the heck change it, you know? But again, with a lot of this uh, new G Pro X stuff we've been seeing coming out, let's take for example, their headphones going from the G Pro to the G Pro X right there. I mean, wow, what a drastic change. So it kind of would have been nice to see some little change. I don't know, put an X up top or an X on the side, just something to make it say, hey, this is the G Pro X. But it's super sleek. I mean, you got that matte black on the bottom, piano black along the whole edge, and then that matte right on top right there. Again, as far as aesthetics and design and build, it looks incredibly solid and it feels incredibly solid. No flex whatsoever, no pinging, tinging, and again, it has some really nice weight to it. Now underneath the keyboard here, you can see you have plenty of very big rubber feet right here. Doesn't budge on you whatsoever. You have two pop-out feet that you can adjust right there if you like that. Now when you lay this keyboard flat, it is fairly flat compared to some of the others that we had that really nice ergonomic incline, but it does have a slight incline in it and it feels really nice, again, using it flat. Now going back to the top of the keyboard here, we are using basic sprayed, kind of like a matte finish keycap here, and they do collect a lot of fingerprint sweat or grease or anything like that, so they do start to shine fairly quickly. So you think, heck, well let me just replace the keycaps, but the stinker here is the bottom row is not standard, so it's going to be a little tougher for you to find some keycaps out there. Now you can, and we're seeing a lot of manufacturers headed in a way to get rid of that, especially Razer kind of introducing that. And by the way, talking to keycaps to fit, the Razer keycaps will fit on this fantastic right there, and I believe they're only 30 bucks and some of my favorite double shot PBT keycaps. But what I really wish Logitech did, and I kind of feel like Logitech might have missed a, a really good shining point right here, is number one, putting double shot PBT keycaps on the keyboard. But number two, since we're offering these other switches, over here, let's offer some other keycaps. Now, I've seen people on Twitter and everything getting Logitech keycaps. I can't find out where to buy them. Like when I go to Logitech's website, I don't see them. But it would have been really nice. Just have some basic solid codes. Like, hey, come over here, pick out your different switch, bam, pick out some keycaps. I think that would have been really, really cool. And again, just kind of introduce that full-fledged custom keyboard feeling from a big manufacturer. So again, in my personal opinion, I think that's kind of a stinker. It would have been really awesome. Number one, to give the customer the option to customize their keyboard, that next step. But also, I mean, heck, Logitech could have made a butt ton of money offering keycaps for sale as well. Now talking about features and everything, how about that RGB? We all know Logitech has some of the best RGB, you know? And I think that's kind of another reason why they stuck with these keycaps, because they know, hey, we've used them before and it makes our RGB look incredibly awesome. 
awesome. It, and it works here, it really does. Logitech, again, it's like my perfect RGB Logitech boards, because it's really subtle. It sits there, it shines through the keycaps, it's nothing blinding and disco just kind of flashing all over the place, you know what I mean? All right, so now let's get into the juicy part here, and that's this board being hot swappable. Again, we have all the colors of switches here, which I will do a sound test on here shortly, but as far as swapping the switches out, really easy to give you a keycap puller, and then bam, we're gonna pull that out right there, and then we're gonna lock right down onto our switch, and it pulls out here. Take your next switch, make sure you have it lined up there. The LED is actually down on the PCB right down there, so you're gonna know exactly which way to put it in. Now, I have heard others online state that you can use any random switch on this. If you wanna use some different Kales or Cherry MX or stuff like that, they say you can use these. I don't have switches laying around here to test it out, but again, that is what I did here. And it kind of makes sense, because when you look at these switches, the Logitech GX switches, right on them here, they state Kale. So they're obviously made by Kale. So again, coming with that basic standard design, you'd figure they plop right in here. In these switches, they have a little bit of give right down. They're a very tiny pinch. They shift left and right there. Now, whenever you're using it or anything, you don't feel a move in one bit. They're in there very, very tight. But again, I can see how other switches will work. All right, so now I'm going to do the sound test for you. And again, we're going to do them in the blues, the reds, and the browns. But I'm just going to do it in gaming form right there. WASD, shift, and spacebar right there, like if we're gaming, so we can still hear the difference of each keys. But I don't want to go off and switch this keyboard out three times. All right, so after that sound test right there, which one was your favorite? I'm a very big Cherry MX Red fan, or heck, just red across any keyboard switch, you know what I mean? And I usually can't stand blues one bit. But let me tell you what, these blues were very, very nice. They are clicky, as you can hear. I mean, they're very clicky, but they're not like this real loud, scratchy, deafening, just cheap sounding clicky, you know? I mean, they sound really, really awesome, and I truly enjoyed using these blues. As far as the browns, for me at least, they felt a little bit heavy, but again, that's just probably because I use so many red switches. And then again, going to the reds right here, I absolutely love them. Very nice and soft, and just very smooth. I absolutely love the reds. But again, the blues were very, very fun to play on. All right, so let's talk about the next biggest concern, and that's gonna be price. With the keyboard coming in at right around 150 bucks, and then again, Again, each box of switch comes in at $50. Now, I really don't think $50 is too much for 92 switches right here with the nice packaging and a nice holder and everything. Of course, we're not buying packaging, but I do like how it's nice and secure. I just ordered some stuff for a custom keyboard and I ordered enough switches for a 60%, right? And I believe they were right around pretty close to 30 bucks, if not like 32 or something like that. And they just come in a regular little bag. Are the prongs gonna get dinged up in there or, or ruined, you know? Sure, I'll be able to get a replacement, but still, it's just the point of that, you know what I mean? So so for a couple bucks more, getting a few extra switches, and getting that really nice secure packaging, I don't think 50 bucks per box of switch is that bad. And then we come down here to the keyboard, again, coming in at 150 bucks. And I really sat here for a while, because I watched a lot of other reviews, and they all said 150 bucks is too much for this board. 150 bucks is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. It really is, you know what I mean? But I sat down here and thought, is it worth 150 bucks? So I started comparing it to a lot of the other boards I have, you know what I mean? And a board similar to this with the RGB and the the switches and stuff they're not hot swappable by the way you can probably get them for around 130 which is pretty much what this board runs at with unable hot swappable just has a gx blues you can get this board for 130 and that's exactly where it sits so i think with the hot swappable in it and everything bumping up to 150 i think that's the perfect spot for it i really do yes 150 bucks is a lot of money so don't catch me right there right i'm not saying it's cheap by any means but i think the price point is right because again when you look at the one that's not hot swappable 
130, which is just pretty much what any other 10 keyless of this kind of build RGB and aesthetics runs at. The one thing I say that is a downfall of this and the one thing I don't like about it is again the keycaps. I think they missed a very, very big hit right here. This keyboard could have been an absolute home run with PBT keycaps and then some other options to buy customizable ones. Just basic color, get some pink, white, blue, some reds, you know what I mean, and blacks. And I think that would have been an absolute hit and just made it a complete must buy. But again, what I would recommend you doing if you're looking at this board right here, number one is buy the switch that you know you love, right? Like me, I love reds. So get reds and yeah, you know what? I might wanna try blues down the road, pick up a box of blues or something like that, you know what I mean? Or of course, like others have stated, maybe you can try your other switches you have and put it in there. But that's what I would recommend. Number one out the gate is get the switch you love. And then again, if you love blues and you don't wanna switch them, heck, you can just go get the one for 130 and it's gonna have these GX blue switches in there and you're good to go. Now you won't be able to swap them out, but you will save 20 bucks. But all in all, I really do like the keyboard. I really enjoy using it. It's a very fun keyboard and it's really exciting seeing these companies head in this direction. Number one, Logitech hot swappable, right? How about Razer with standard bottom row and then double shot PBD keycaps? It re you really see these companies heading in that direction. I'm really excited to see what is going to come out this year. Again, with these companies already stepping in this direction of like, you know, customizing keyboards and whatnot, Really excited to see what's next. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by watching my review on the Logitech G Pro X gaming keyboard here. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.